Hi guys, my name's Andy and in this video I want to share with you a little high voltage insulation uh, test meter that I recently purchased off uh, the internet. This sort of instrument is used for testing the insulation of uh, either wiring or uh, the insulation of a motor or a transformer. It's uh, called a MEGA and uh, made by Evershed and Vignals uh, in the UK and I had one of these meters about 30 years ago and uh, as an electrician I, I use this meter uh, every day and it's the sort of thing that uh, as a service engineer I use for checking the insulation of transformers and capacitors. It produces a 500 volt uh, DC output and it uh, effectively uh, pressure tests the insulation of uh, the component under test. I'm embarrassed to say that the little meter that I had uh, I threw away because I left it for a long time without uh, taking the batteries out and the uh, battery compartment corroded and I wasn't at all surprised to see this meter being offered with a uh, damaged battery compartment and uh, this is the wording that the uh, the guy used uh, for the advert. I contacted the guy that was selling it and um, he assured me that uh, the meter had been working until the uh, corrosion problem and he was going to replace the terminals. In fact it started replacing some of the terminals but lost interest in the project and so decided to uh, move it on. I'd actually missed the end of the uh, auction uh, but we uh, agreed a, a sales price and uh, he put it on as a, a buy now and uh, so I purchased it for three pound as I thought that was a fair price. I, I hadn't got the heart to only offer 99 pence. Didn't seem fair. When the meter arrived, uh, a quick look around uh, confirmed that the, the battery case had in fact suffered uh, severe corrosion. But the meter looked okay in every other respect. Um, the leads and the manual uh, were missing uh, from the meter. And uh, funnily enough, I'd kept a set of leads from the meter that I'd thrown away and the manual. They were in the back of one of my old AVO boxes. Um, so uh, my, my habit of not throwing stuff away <laughs> eventually paid off. The wire that was connected to the uh, screw that you see on the bottom left hand side of the image there uh, was uh, an orange wire and it was very badly corroded. The terminal was corroded on the inside of the meter. This is a close-up of that terminal and uh, if you look closely you can see the uh, copper oxide that's been formed by the acid that has leached out of the battery. Uh, the copper oxide is starting to form on the copper wire there. Uh, but what's interesting is that wire is about four inches long and the acid had actually leached right through to the other end which goes to the push button switch. So uh, I took that wire out and um, here you can see the oxide in the insulation and uh, this is the other end that was connected to the switch and you can see the oxide there. So uh, I cut the insulation off and uh, put it under the microscope. Uh, I'm not sure what magnification this is but uh, if you look in here you can see the uh, crystals of uh, copper oxide. So uh, battery acid is uh, a real devil. It's uh, via capillary action. It's been drawn uh, four inches into the heart of the meter. Fortunately, it didn't go any further. This is looking at the crystals that have formed in the insulation at the far end of the wire, deep inside the meter. This is a new lug that I made. It's very tiny, sitting on the end of my finger there. And this is the lug soldered onto the new wire. I use blue wire as it's connected to the negative end of the battery. 
and seem more appropriate than the manufacturer's uh, original orange wire. Originally the meter was designed to have six AA batteries uh, but when I checked out the loading of the instrument I found that it only drew about 110 milliamps or 133 milliamps on the battery test function so rather than replace all of the uh, terminals which would have been very tedious I decided to install an ordinary uh, PP3 battery uh, a PP3 has uh, a rating of something like 595 milliamp hours for a, a little alkaline battery and uh, because I won't use this meter very often uh, in fact I'll always take the battery out having uh, learnt the lesson uh, so I decided to arrange to fit uh, a PP3 battery and uh, this is uh, the end result and to stop the battery from uh, moving around in the battery compartment I've just cut a little bit of foam and arranged to uh, hold the battery in place. When I took away the uh, original battery connections and uh, the bolts that were holding them it left a series of holes uh, from the battery compartment through to the uh, interior of the meter and I just filled those holes with uh, a little bit of contact adhesive just so that uh, it hopefully keeps any dust or uh, bugs out of the movement of the instrument and here you can see the uh, adhesive over the holes if you do get involved with resurrecting an old meter like this there's a couple of things I suggest you pay particular attention to and uh, the obvious one is uh, be delicate with the instrument uh, here I've taken the scale plate off the uh, meter and the pointer is very vulnerable um, but uh, the next thing is cleanliness make sure that you've got no iron filings on the uh, cuffs of your shirt or on your jumper as if you get iron filings on the magnetic pole piece where the moving coil is uh, mounted it can be the devil's own job to get those iron filings out successfully this is the back of the front cover of the meter and these silver fingers are part of the rotary switch uh, that moves around the contacts of the printed circuit board to allow you to select the uh, various parts of the circuit that's needed for the different ranges and here I've superimposed uh, that image of the switch contacts over the printed circuit board before you close the meter up it's always worth checking to make sure that there's no dust or debris left inside the meter and um, one thing I always do is to gently blow the pointer from one side and uh, just to make sure that the pointer travels uh, smoothly across the scale if there's any hairs or dust or filings uh, in the mechanism it'll show up at this stage and uh, not easy to do while I'm trying to hold the camera and look <laughs> through the viewfinder and blow but hopefully you get the idea I really thought I'd got this meter clean but if you just look at this shot you'll see that there's a little bead of solder just there and um, I don't know where that's come from whether it was me or whether it's been there for years but uh, it wouldn't shake loose uh, but uh, just make sure the glass is uh, spotlessly clean on both sides and um, give it a blow to free it of any dust I never intended to uh, restore this equipment to the uh, original manufacturer's specification um, but uh, I just wanted to breathe life into it and give myself a high voltage test meter at a, at a low cost and uh, had a bit of fun doing it as well. Once I was happy that everything was mechanically sound 
uh, I carried out a series of checks to make sure that the um, meter was reading correctly with uh, a range of uh, different resistors and uh, I also checked that uh, when uh, a flattened battery that is just in the uh, within the reading uh, that says it's okay uh, still produced uh, over 500 volts for the DC check a um, little bit marginal um, but uh, if the battery is in the white uh, mark on the meter then uh, it will produce 500 volts and it checked out ok on the uh, low ohmic range not desperately accurate but uh, plenty adequate for uh, what the meter is intended for ok I hope you found that interesting thanks for watching bye bye